What's up YouTube, my name is Kenneth. Today I'm really excited to share with you this video. If you've been following the channel for a long time, you guys know I try to go out one night each month to a dark location to try to get time lapse and night photography. And I almost always bring my C11 telescope. It's really been a staple of the channel. But for someone who's out often with a telescope and cameras, you'll notice I really, really shoot through the telescope. I prefer to shoot really wide and capture large portions of the sky in the Milky Way. Um, and the telescope has really been more of a target to shoot than really a tool to shoot through. And I actually just really enjoy doing visual observing with my C11 telescope when I'm out there taking time lapse. So one thing I've really wanted to capture for a long time is what it really feels like to be out there, you know, being able to look up at the sky and then also look through the telescope and really looking at multiple objects in a single night. And one way I've sort of tried to do this is what I call a telescope first person view time lapse. I've attempted it in the past and I just feel like I haven't done it justice yet. But basically the idea is to have a camera at the prime focus of the telescope, capturing what the telescope sees, and then a camera with like a wide lens, piggybacking the telescope, looking at a large portion of the sky. That way you get both close up and a wide uh, look at what you're looking at. And then take time lapse of both, synchronize them together, and that's basically what I call a telescope first person view time lapse. And uh, ever since I sort of updated my telescope mount to the much better Celestron CGXL mount, uh, I've been really wanting to try this again. Unfortunately, there have been some setbacks. If you saw my last video, you remember my telescope broke. <laughs> the corrector lens shattered, and I thought the telescope was a complete loss. Thankfully, Celestron reached out and said they could fix it for a reasonable fee. And now that it's fixed, my mount is ready. It's time to try this again. So first up, last July, I traveled to one of my favorite dark sky locations up to the ancient Bristol Cone Pine Forest in the White Mountains. It has one of the darkest skies out of the locations I frequent, especially east and south. But I don't really come up here often because of the long drive. It takes over six hours to get there, and I usually only have one night to enjoy. But this day was one of the hottest days of the year. It was over 115 degrees down in the desert below. So to me, it was worth it to drive up to over 11,000 feet so that you can escape the heat. And besides, if there's ever a location to call magical, this is the place. You're surrounded by the world's oldest trees. Some of them are over 4,000 years old. And it's really cool to see these ancient trees clinging to life as they sprout right out of the white rocks. Once arriving, I got right to work setting everything up, getting all the cameras set up. I wanted to also do a time-lapse dolly shot of the whole setup. Lots of work setting up, but I was getting really nervous because the clouds were getting worse. As darkness fell, things only got worse. Not only was it cloudy, but one of my cameras kept turning off with an error, which just completely ruined the shot. This time-lapse ended up just capturing how frustrated I was. Eventually, I moved on from the telescope FPV idea and decided to do some photography and capture a couple time-lapse sequences. I also attempted a new technique to capture a holy grail time-lapse from night to day. And here's everything I captured that night. In the end, I had a wonderful sunrise and I was happy I made the trek, but the telescope first person view time lapse would have to wait. I wouldn't make another attempt until February of 2022. There I head out to the Koso Mountains with one of my brothers and our eldest sons. Unfortunately, as we neared our campsite, I realized I had left the telescope tripod at home. I was super bummed, but we still had a beautiful night under the stars. I took the opportunity to do some photography of the campsite as well as Orion especially with the setting crescent moon that illuminated the foreground. It was really a beautiful night and we ha still had a great trip, had some fun with the drone, but unfortunately the telescope first person time-lapse would have to wait. And that brings me to my third attempt in March, 2022. And this month I met my other brother out in Toronto Pinnacles. There 
uh, things weren't looking all that great. It was incredibly windy and there were clouds again. And as I was setting up the telescope, I could just tell all the shots I were gonna get were gonna be fully impacted by the wind shaking the telescope. So I did shorten the shots to only 15 seconds for each image and that gave me sort of the best chance for it. Um, and I spent about 15 to 20 minutes on each target as I went from target to target. And really by the fourth target, all the clouds were started to pass and the wind died down. So I had actually a really wonderful rest of the night. The only remaining sort of issue was I had a hasty polar alignment. So you can notice that in, uh, in the resulting images. But anyway, regardless, I was pretty happy with what I captured. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoy. So there you have it. Uh, I, I hope you guys enjoyed that. I really enjoyed being able to share some of my favorite things I like to look at visually uh, to be able to do it in this time lapse, uh, especially a whole range of, of galaxies and nebulas and uh, globular clusters and all sorts of things that I like to, to look at visually. Um, and then one thing I noticed actually was when I was going through the time lapse on the piggyback, it was really amazing to see how many satellites are visible. Just so many, especially around the Sombrero Galaxy and the, and the Starburst Galaxy M61. Uh, I was just, I couldn't believe how many there were. At first, I thought they were these Starlink satellites, but uh, they were just moving too slowly. And also they were probably too dim. I uh, remember it got a a really sensitive camera and so uh, I, I finally realized that they're actually geostationary uh, satellites and so uh, they're not really moving in relation to our vantage point and so they're kind of just stationary and it's actually the sky moving behind it and the camera is tracking the sky and so uh, I thought that was really kind of cool uh, and it's really amazing to see just how crowded that orbit really is. Anyway, I, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks so much for watching. And if you got all the way to the end, really appreciate it. Uh, I would love if you could leave a comment, let me know what you think. Uh, and I'm always looking forward to my next adventure. So if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. That way you're notified when I make my next video. Thank you guys so much for watching. And of course, have a great day.